Welcome to the BearCast, and it's the Super BearCast, that's what I like to call it, I'll get to that later. I am your host, Cole Yun, and whoever's seen this for the first time, I want to thank you. Uh, I'm very happy I get to keep on doing this again, it's always my favorite part of the week. Uh, make sure, if this is new to you and you like what you see, or if you like what you've heard before, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit that notification bell so you stay on date. And before I keep on going, I do want to apologize. My voice does sound a little bit like Peppermint Patty from the Peanuts right now. I've been dealing with a little bit of a cold, but I just wanted to tell you that. So we are like, oh, wh- wh- what's up with his voice? So that's all. But I'm not, I'm not stopping the show at all. I like doing this. Let's keep on working. So first things first, let's talk about the big thing this weekend. It is the Super Bowl. I actually have some teammates right now that are currently in Las Vegas going to go see the Super Bowl. And so, I, I mean, I just find it really cool. They got the opportunity and take it, and I don't blame them. I've never been to a Super Bowl. I've had some family members that have, and they said it's a blast. That's on my bucket list. So that's something I want to do. But um, whoever who's playing this weekend? It is the Kansas City Chiefs versus the San Francisco 49ers. And so this game has a lot of stake for both sides. Um, let's go down it. Um, Patrick Mahomes, um, this is his – Four Super Bowl appearance. He has won two Super Bowls, and he has lost one Tom Brady. If he wins this, this will be his third Super Bowl, and he has won, he would win three Super Bowls over four years, only losing to probably the greatest quarterback of all time, Tom Brady. This is also a big game for Travis Kelsey. This will help him submit his status as the greatest tight end of all time. If, if they win, you know, that Super Bowl. Also, this is this – is, People are saying that this could very well be a dynasty. I mean, I think it's already a dynasty, but I think when this game is won, or like if they win, I'm not going to say they have, but if they win this game, this will submit in everyone's mind who watches football, this is going to be a dynasty game. So like this is the dynasty, like we're in the middle of the dynasty. I think we've already have been, but I think people haven't really seen it. And now I think we're seeing it more. As we progress for the 49ers, this would help cement a lot of legacies for Trent Williams, Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, and Brock Purdy. A lot of people have been hating on Brock Purdy recently. Um, that's to be its own debate for another time. But if he wins this, he would actually would hush up a lot of the critics. So that would be something to be said. And this would also be the first Super Bowl win for San Francisco since 1995. 1995 that is a long long time and so yeah no i mean they've been the previous ones they've been one in 13 they lost to the ravens and they lost to the chiefs in 2020 so this is kind of also kind of a rematch per se um there's no jimmy g in the the 2021 he was in the game but now brock purdy is the new quarterback so we're gonna see how he plays but um let me give you some keys let me give you some predictions and um, who I think is going to win. Um, first things first, I think this game is going to be a lot of quarterback play. I think that both teams, I think they're very run first, especially. I mean, we haven't seen Kansas City thrown the ball that much, but recently they have. I mean, yeah, they have guys like um, Rice, who's starting to become a really good receiver. Valquez, he stepped up in a couple of big plays. Um, and you still got Travis Kelsey, who I think is the best receiving tight end I've ever seen in my own eyes. Um, and yeah, but I think their main meat is the offensive line. Yeah. They've lost a couple of guys. I mean, Jawan Taylor, I mean, a lot of people have kind of got on his butt, especially with a lot of holdings and all that. But yeah, I think that's also a big thing. Um, Isaiah Pacheco, I think he's very underrated. I think you watch him. I think he's going to have a very, very big game. And like what he had last year against the Philadelphia Eagles. I think that he, again, I think he's a very underrated player. And I think when I watched them the first time, and that was actually with the Eagles in the Super Bowl because I was busy with my own stuff. But um, Pacheco really put his name down there. And I think he's going to do the same thing again with the San Francisco 49ers. Yes, trench play will be a factor. I think both sides are going to be like, well, who wants it more? Because both sides, they run the ball really well, especially in the 49ers side with their their bread and butter as wide zone. Christian McCaffrey is amazing. I think he is easily the best running back in the league. And we'll get more into him because there's been some other stuff that's been going on. Not anything bad, but it's just like, 
it's like it's good controversial stuff that makes sense but um yeah they would help that and i have some friends that are on the 49ers like that actually play but that'll be interesting to see what they do i, I think that he's going to do great um those boys are going to do great so that's going to be good and um overall i think that watch out for i think personally watch out for patrick mahomes chris jones willie sneed isaiah pacheco um Debo Samuel, Christian McCaffrey, to have all big games. Brock Purdy, I mean, yeah, Brock Purdy's there. But again, I think he's Kirk Cousins 2.0. What I'm really – what my biggest critique about him is see how he does without his weapons, and he doesn't do well with his weapons. So we'll see what happens. Um, he is very lucky. We'll see what happens on that end. But I think that Brock Purdy – he's going to do what he needs to do in the sense he's going to manage the game for them. I think he's going to – Put them in spots where they're going to still be in, co in contention. But I think it's going to be the other guys that are going to help them, like, say, to make it close, per se. Um, I also think this is going to be a battle of the defenses. I think that it's going to be a huge secondary battle. I think both on the Chiefs side, I think the offensive side, it's going to be how can you find plays besides Travis Kelsey. Yes, there are going to be plays where Patrick Mahomes is going to throw beautiful balls to Travis Kelsey. But also, what's going to happen with Rice? What's going to happen with um, Tony if he's cleared to go? Kadarius Tony. What happens with Valquez? What happens with all those guys? Who's going to step up and who's going to make those plays? Rice has done a great job so far in the postseason. Like, he's actually done a really good job. But we'll see what happens. Um, I mean, the Niners have a really good secondary run by my boy Diamador and Lenore. They call me on the block. You know how it be. Um, and they got Fred Warner. They got other guys there that are just straight ballers that can play. And no joke. I mean, yeah, I'm wearing a Hawks hat right now. I'm always going to stay true to my Seahawks. But the Niners have a damn good defense. They got a really, really good defense. So I would not be surprised if they make big plays. I would not be surprised if there are even a couple of turnovers in this game. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but overall, I think Kansas City's going to win. And I think what really comes down to it, in my opinion, is going to be the quarterback play. I think Brock Purdy versus Patrick Mahomes. I think both teams, yes, you can make the class. Yes, San Francisco has the better roster than Kansas City. And Kansas City has played lights out defense. So has the 49ers. I think it's all going to come down to his quarterback play. Because, yeah, both of these teams, I feel like, are very identical with their DNA and structure, I think it's going to come down to quarterback play and who are going to make the big plays. And I think Patrick Mahomes will have enough to do it. And I stick by this. And, I mean, I've said it before on certain platforms. I mean, you can look on TikTok. I've said it before. But I think it's going to be a score, a very, very close scoring game, 21-20. I got the Kansas City Chiefs winning this game and winning the Super Bowl, going back-to-back, -back, which is a very hard thing to do in the NFL. And I think they're going to submit themselves as the dynasty to beat. And then for who you got as your Super Bowl MVP, I think Patrick Mahomes has a good case. You can always put it on him. I mean, he's always going to make good plays. But I'm going to go with Willie Sneed. I think Willie Sneed's going to have a big game. I think that Baltimore... I mean, Baltimore, he was current. I, in my opinion, I thought he was the MVP of that game, and I think he's going to show out again because not only – whether Debo is cleared or not, I think he's going to have to play against Brandon Ayuk. And Brandon Ayuk, if we're talking a pure receiver, is top five. Top five. Debo, like as a player, easily top five too. But Brandon Ayuk is a different dude. I have seen him play in, in Arizona State. Who cooked up guys? He cooked up pros. He cooked up my boy Diamondor and Lenore. He cooked up Javon Holland. And if they, if you don't believe me, you can look on the tape. Oregon versus Arizona State, 2019. Boy can ball. Like I, like that's a that's a man right there. That's a man that can ball. I'm like man. I'm surprised he went that low. And the San Francisco Warriors got him. I think it was a great pick by them. When I saw he went to. Went to San Francisco. I'm like, man, oh man, they got to steal. They got to steal. But yeah, no, Brandon Ayuk's a baller. Um, Willie Sneed, though, I think he's going to play his lights out. And Willie Sneed's going to do great things. I think he's going to do great things. I think he's going to get a pick, maybe a forced fumble, but I think he's going to be there when big plays happen. 
That's how I see it. And then on the offensive side, I could very well see Christian McCaffrey being the offensive MVP if the Niners win. Let's I, I think Christian McCaffrey is on another level compared to these guys. And I also could see Isaiah Pacheco making a big wave too. I think he's going to have a very big game as well. But speaking of Christian McCaffrey, if you did not know, yesterday it was the NFL Awards show. Yes, so the NFL Awards show is um, it's where they announce the MVP. They announce offensive, defensive player of the year, coach of the year, rookie of the year, as well as comeback player of the year. And I just want to mention some of these things and talk about them. So first things first, so our MVP this year is Lamar Jackson. He was one, one vote away from unanimous MVP. And the other person that got the MVP vote for first place was Josh Allen. I'll get to that later. Offensive player of the year, Christian McCaffrey. Christian McCaffrey, rightfully deserving. Um, defensive player of the year, Miles Garrett. We'll get more into that too. I got to show you some stuff because I honestly think that was kind of a, a witch hunt. Um, comeback player of the year, Joe Flacco. DeMar Hamlin had a, ha, although Joe Flacco won. DeMar Hamlin had more first place votes than him. And the reason why Joe Flacco won was because he had more second place and third place votes. Um, comeback play, I mean, no, offensive rookie of the year, CJ Stroud, rightfully deserving. Um, defensive rookie of the year, Will Anderson. That we'll get more into later because I have a different opinion on that. And coach of the year, Kevin Stefanski from the Cleveland Browns. That is also rightfully deserving. But the three big ones I want to talk about are Defensive Player of the Year, Comeback Player of the Year, and a mixture of MVP and Offensive Player of the Year. Um, first things first, let's talk about MVP and Offensive Player of the Year. Lamar Jackson won MVP. I kind of saw this happening. But I think this is a bigger debate in the sports world that I want to talk about this. Um, for starters, um, I thought Christian McCaffrey should have won MVP. I know. I know. I'm, I'm wearing a Hawks hat. You're like, well, why, why are you saying that? Why are you saying that? You're a Hawks fan. Because I see greatness where greatness is due. Christian McCaffrey had one hell of a year. He had a hell of a year. And don't get me wrong. Lamar Jackson, rightfully, give his flowers. Give his flowers. But the MVP stands for most valuable player. Not best quarterback award. That's why I think that the NFL needs to do some. It's, I consider the NFL awards like the Grammys. It's very subjective and it's kind of run by a certain cabal of people in the sense of, oh, these people make the shots and it's not really by the fans. It is mostly by sports people in the world like Tony Romo, Tony Gonzalez, Shannon Sharp had an opportunity, and journalists. And so. While they they do have a more respectable credibility, I think that also fans need to have somewhat of a vote too, in my opinion, because sometimes I feel like they're out of touch, especially with sports writers and sports journalists. And so that's something that needs to be said. And I think the MVP has become the quarterback award, which I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Sometimes there are quarterbacks that are very deserving to win the award. But but I think skill players and other guys have been more valuable to their team than a quarterback for most parts. I remember J.J. Watt had one great year. He should have won MVP, but they gave it to Tony Romo. What did Tony Romo do? Nada. Not a damn thing. And so it just infuriates me because we stand, I mean, the NBA, even though it's a little more, even though it's subjective, you could still say, oh, look, that player was better than that player. And look, when Steph Curry won his first MVP when he was playing against James Harden, I personally thought James Harden was the better player, but they gave it to Steph Curry. And you know what? Props, props to do. Both players were phenomenal players. Just saying. But with the NFL, it's just become, all right, who's the best quarterback this year? That's why I think there needs to be a category within itself. It's like with the Oscars, if people don't know this, Beauty and the Beast, when they were in 1994, they were going to win Best 
picture. But the Academy decided, you know what? We're going to make their own category, Best Animated Film, and, they, and they'll win that, and we'll give it to someone else for Best Picture. That's what should happen with NFL with their quarterbacks. Because it's not, it's not about, oh, who's the best quarterback this year, and they're going to win it. If Lamar didn't beat Brock Purdy, Brock Purdy would have been our MVP this year. And I would have emphatically disagreed. Emphatically disagreed. But yeah, I just wanted to say that. I feel like that that is definitely getting interesting with the MVP conversation for sure. And next, we're going to talk about um, the comeback player of the year. I want to mention this really quick. Even though Joe Flacco won, DeMar Hamlin had more first place votes. No disrespect to DeMar Hamlin. I think DeMar Hamlin, he has done wonderful things. And I think, honestly, it's very tragic what happened to him. And just for him being there, props is what props do. He's one hell of a football player. One hell of a football player. So I don't want anyone taking this out of context and saying, this is disrespectful. He's shitting on DeMar Hamlin. No, 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 no. This is a knock to the NFL and the people that are there. Why the hell are you voting Tamar Hamlin? Why the hell are you voting for him? He didn't do Jack Diddley. He didn't do Jack Diddley, people. The only thing he did was a, a punt that was a fake that absolutely just exploded against the Chiefs. He barely played this year. Joe Flacco actually had a more compelling story. He was 40 years old, didn't do Jack Diddley. He was on the phone, you know. Just doing his thing, sitting on his couch with his dogs, you know, family, all that. The Browns told him, hey, we need a quarterback. Can you come by? He said, yeah, why not? And you know what? Guess what happened? He, bought he took business. And Deshaun, I will say, people were saying, oh, yeah, Joe Flacco won good for him. But I think this is bigger than implications. I could very well see Joe Flacco staying there for two more years. Deshaun Watson's not the answer. And I was rooting for Deshaun. I'm going to be real. I was rooting for Deshaun Watson to do well because I saw a guy that was like, whoa, this dude's really, really good. But Deshaun Watson, bro, he's not cutting it. He's not cutting it. So they got to figure some things out or they got to get rid of him. But that deal is looking rotten than an apple right now. And it's not looking pretty. It's not looking pretty at all. And then lastly, defensive player of the year. So it's between Miles Garrett and TJ Watt. And I'm gonna. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you this little, little thing on media, and I'm gonna show you some stats. Since you've already seen it now, I'm gonna tell you this. I don't know why the flipping hell T.J. Watt decided not to get the Defensive Player of the Year. He got robbed. He got bamboozled, led astray, and ran. They looted his pockets. They looted his pockets. Miles Garrett, don't get me wrong, Miles Garrett's put in a phenomenal job. This is just because of the Cleveland Browns and how strong their defense was. And their, their defense was strong. But statistically, TJ Watt was the better dude. He was the better dude out of all of them. And again, and then this is why I call the NFL awards, and it's very subjective. These Grammys, these Oscars, all of it. And um, it's very subjective. It's just like, oh, we'll just pick this person because this dude has better clout with us. Or uh, it's all because of certain politics. This was a political move, people. A political move. And I just, I can't stand that. I really can't. And I've experienced it too. It's disgusting. It is disgusting when people play politics like this. And speaking of politics, let's talk about Cliff Kingsbury. Yes, Cliff Kingsbury. We talked about him last week, and I said, oh, yeah, he's going to become the Raiders coach. I mean, offensive coordinator. He said, psych. Nope, 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 not today. And he is now the new offensive coordinator of the Washington Commanders. And there are some sports journalists that I'm not going to name that are calling this politics. And, the, and they're calling also the race card and political moves. While I am a firm believer that we should not have political moves or nepotism, I'm against that. I'm against that. I valiantly disagree with this decision. And I'm going to give where credit's due. I see the commander's vision now. And then the only reason why I say that is because I think they're going to get one man, and that's Caleb Williams from USC. 
And if you don't know that, Cliff Kingsbury was the quarterback's coach of the USC Trojans. And, you know, what's funny is that Caleb Williams, once he heard the news, posted on his Instagram story and said, congratulations, dog. I don't blame him. I don't blame him for saying that. And I think this is a good move for the commanders. I mean, even if you don't get him, you can still say, you know what? The Bears got him before us. We couldn't make a deal. Let's try to get Justin Fields. Because, I mean, Cliff Kingsbury's done, dealt with guys like Justin Fields. He played with Kyler Murray. He's also worked with Patrick Mahomes. Arguably the greatest quarterback in the world right now. And then on top of it, he is with other coaches. And I think this is a perfect fit. I think that, and statistically, his offense has gotten better as time progresses. And not only that, he's also learned from Lincoln and Riley. He's learned from a lot of coaches. And I will say, you know what? I think this is a perfect position where he needs to be. He does not need to be a head coach in the NFL. If we were talking to a head coach, okay, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. He's not a good head coach, but he's a very good offensive coordinator. And I think this is a great hire by the commanders. I think this is a great hire. And I think they needed to knock the ball out of the park. I'm not going to say they did, but this is an encouraging step. And saying getting Caleb Williams, that's going to, if say, hypothetically, they strike a deal, which I think, I'm not going to say it's 70%, but I'm going to say halfway. I'm like 50% chance. They're going to try to strike a deal. I would not be surprised at all. They get Caleb Williams and people, they switch their tune on the commanders. Be like, watch out for the commanders now. They're doing good. They're doing nothing. So that I was just like, I had to say that. And also their offensive coordinator, Eric Bieniemy, got fired. And there were some people that were saying that brother deserves a job and all of that. And I'm like, I mean, yeah, he should have stayed at Kansas City, but still, it's the business. I mean, what's 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 for you to do? Are you just gonna hire this coach because he's African American? Are you gonna hire this coach because he's part of the LGBTQ community? No, I think that's stupid in my opinion. I think it's stupid. It should be off of hard work. And don't get me wrong, brothers have been hired now. Brothers have been hired. Raheem Morris is a really good defensive coordinator, and I'm going to root for him to do well in Atlanta. I am. I think seeing him play Seattle a couple times, he knows what's up. He knows what's up now. Like, he did really well against a Seattle team. He's done really well against the Rams, I mean, the Niners. He knows how to make defenses work. And so I'm going to be rooting for him to do really well this year. And I, he's deserved it. He deserved this opportunity to go and get hired as the new Falcons coach. And there are other guys. Gerard Mayo. I hope he does well, too. I hope, There are multiple positions where they are minority that are becoming head coaches. And then it goes down the list, too. Mike McDonald. He's a hell of a coach in Miami. That, too. So, I mean... Not, I just wanted to say that because that personally kind of rubbed me the wrong way with people saying, oh, yeah, well, this dude didn't get – this dude got in because of his connections. No, this dude actually knows how to coach. And so Cliff Kingsbury is a good good pickup for the commanders. I see their vision now. And they also got some good defense coordinators. And so, yeah, I'm, I mean, it, we're going to see what happens, but I think this is a good pickup for them. All right, next up um, – some other coaching moves really quick before we get into our last subject. Um, Seattle hired the D, uh, the Cowboys D-line coach, Aden Durant, as the new D.C. I like it. I think it's a great pickup. Um, Leslie Frazier is now the assistant head coach for the Seahawks. I like it again. He's a good defensive mind. I love that opportunity. That's another brother that's good. He's a good hire. Um, and then also... Um, on top of it, the LA Chargers, I've also been talking to some people. They all, they just hired Greg Roman as the offense coordinator. We'll see how that one goes. I have my questions about him. Um, Jesse Minton, who's the new defensive coordinator, originally came from Michigan, part of the Harbaugh coaching staff. I like the move. Bring, bring as much people from his staff to LA, and I love it. And lastly but not least, former San Francisco 49er player Navarro Bowman is in talks with the Chargers and Harbaugh to become the new linebackers coach for the LA Chargers, former player of Jim Harbaugh. And I got to say, if they can strike this, I, I personally, this would be my favorite hire. I love Navarro Bowman. It is unfortunate what happened to him with his leg and him just coming back and all that. He's a good 
player, a really, really good player. And for him being the coaching, oh, he's going to make Drew Tranquil. He's going to make a lot of those guys a lot better. And I would not be surprised if they get some linebackers this year in the draft. So overall, though, if they can get this, I think this would be a home run hit as a hiring for a coaching. All right. So speaking of L.A., we're going to talk a little bit about basketball. And the Lakers have been, you know, they, they got, you got the Lakers, you got the Clippers. The Lakers are doing pretty good at basketball right now. You know what's surprising is that the trade deadline came, and then on top of it, um, they didn't make really any moves. But the Lakers are interested in signing Spencer Dimwittle, which he recently got traded. And um, I want to go through some trades and just tell you a quick thing, and then we'll go through our question of the week, and we'll wrap it up. But, um, yeah, so the Jazz, they, they've they been doing pretty well, but they traded Kelly Olenek to the Raptors, and they got some they got some compensation for it. I like Kelly Olenek. I mean, I, I feel like he should be in a better place. Toronto right now is all over, all over, and I just feel bad for him that he's going to Toronto out of all places. I mean, if they had Pascal Siakam, it would have been a different situation, but I wanted to mention that. Um, the Sixers, they got Buddy Heald. And they traded. They got Buddy Hill for basically a bag of chips. I mean, they got they got rid of some players, um, and they got they gave up a couple of draft picks. But it's not real, in my opinion. It's not anything significant. In like I see, oh my gosh, this is a huge deal. But I like this move for the Sixers. Joel Embiid. I know he's hurt right now, but their goal is to win the finals. You got to get Joel Embiid healthy. You got to get Tobias Harris. You got to get all those guys healthy. And you know what? Buddy Heald, his best thing easily is a shooter. He is a shooter. And you got, I mean, you got Tyrese Maxey. I love Tyrese Maxey. I think he he's one of the best uprising stars in the league up there with Jalen Brunson, which I will mention him a little more. Um, but Tyrese Maxey, he is a very, like, he goes to the rim. He can kick it out to Buddy Heald, and Buddy Heald can shoot a nice three ball. So I like the move. Something to be said there. Um, the Oklahoma City Thunder, previously known as the Seattle Supersonics. Let's get them back as an NBA team. NBA, Adam Silver. Two, um, they got Gordon Hayward from the Charlotte Hornets. They got rid some players and some draft picks. I think this is a good move for the Thunder. Try to get them in a win-now position. We'll see what happens. But I like Shea Gilgis Alexander. Um, but we'll, we're, I'm interested in see what's going to happen. And then also P.J. Washington got traded by the Hornets. Something to be said there. Grant Williams got there in return. Grant Williams has been on and off. We'll see what happens. I, I, I'm iffy about the move on both sides. Uh, we'll see what happens. And then lastly but not least, and this is the team I want to highlight, is the New York Knicks. Yes, people. The New York Knicks actually made a good move. They got Alex Burks and Bo, Bogon Bajanovic. If I said that correctly, great. If I don't, I do apologize. But um. They got rid of him, giving up two second round picks and a couple of players. They didn't even give up their first round picks, which they have a boatload. They have four first round picks over over I think is over the next two years or something. But they got a lot of first round draft picks. They are doing the Boston Celtics route where they're just accumulating draft picks and now they're being very decisive. But I just absolutely love this move. And you know why? Because one, Burks is a Thibodeau guy. Um, the New York Knicks head coach is Tom Thibodeau. I respect them. I think he's a great coach. I like them in Chicago. I don't know why they didn't keep him there. But, um, you know, I, li- I like this move. And the players that they've gotten, especially with him, Bodanovich, and then also OG Ananobi, they got him through a trade. That was a, that was a while ago. But I just, I love the move. I love the moves. And you know what? I mean, again, with the Milwaukee Bucks, they've been not so great. Doc Rivers has a one and four start. Um, the Boston Celtics, they have a couple of issues. I I got them right now as the favorite to win the East, even though I'm not a huge fan of Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. But don't be don't be surprised, don't be sleeping on this New York Knicks team. Do not be sleeping on them. I think Jalen Brunson is it. He, he's so far my MVP this year for basketball. He's done amazing. I think he has carried a lot of the the load, and he he's a baller. He's a baller. He I am shocked Dallas gave him up 
because oh my, if say if they didn't get Kyrie, Brunson would have been just fine. Brunson would have been just fine, and him with Luca, ooh, 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 that would have been a crazy duo. That's the ooh wee right there. But um, yeah, no, I like this move a lot. Once Julius Randle gets back, and I know OG and Anubi is also dealing with some injuries. Do not be surprised if they're in the Eastern Conference Finals playing against the Boston Celtics. I love this New York Knicks team, and they look legit. They look legit as all get out. So I'm very, very excited to see what's going to happen. But, um, yeah, so we'll get to our question of the week, and then I'll wrap it up there, and we'll see you next week. Then This question comes from Bailey Jarmillo, and uh, he says, why did you choose Campbell University? So. That's it's a good question. Um, before I was at Oregon, loved Oregon. I loved my time there. Shout out to all the people that helped me get the, get me there. But um, I went to Campbell, and the reason why I went to Campbell is well, the big part was religion. Um, people don't know me. I am a man through Christ. Um, all glory to God. My opinion. Um, he's helped me through a lot of stuff, and I wanted to go somewhere where it not only I can get playing time. But I can also be walking more with the Lord and having more faith within himself. I just recently got a Bible. I've been trying to read more. I've been trying to do more stuff. But that was one of the biggest decisions why I went to Campbell. And Campbell is a Baptist universe, Baptist University. It's part of the Christianity world. And that's something I want to be a part of. It's just I want to be a Christian. I want to... I want to walk the walk. And so that was a part of it. And I also like the area here too. I love North Carolina. I think North Carolina is a great place. It is it's nice where I've been so far. Everyone there has been friendly to me and I, I really appreciate it. But yeah, I mean, that's it for the show. Thank you again for listening. Um, I'm signing out. Hope you all have a blessed day, everyone. And I'll see you here next week. Stay smooth.